This is the Best Health Podcast, brought to you by Wake Forest Baptist Health in partnership with MedCost. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to the latest Best Health Podcast episode. Justin Gomez here on behalf of Wake Forest Baptist Health. Thank you for joining us once again. Um, we're going to continue our conversation on this episode that uh, we've we've done in the last several episodes. I'm just talking about uh, topics surrounding COVID-19, coronavirus, uh, trying to provide as many resources as possible to uh, you, the listeners, uh, about various topics surrounding um, working through coronavirus and COVID-19 and and um, how we can um, best manage various aspects of our life and, and hearing from uh, some of our experts at Wake Forest Baptist Health. So um, we have uh, a return guest this this episode. I'm excited to talk with her once again, uh, Dr. Ellie Marie Cabello Quinones. Um, she is going to be talking to us today uh, about stress and anxiety management with kids and adolescents specifically. Um, so before we get into the conversation, I do uh, like I have in the previous podcast um, surrounding COVID nineteen. I just want to let all our listeners know if you have any questions about COVID-19 and um, just looking for additional resources, we have lots of great information on the website wakehealth.edu slash coronavirus, wakehealth.edu slash coronavirus. Want to also remind everyone that our COVID-19 hotline is active and available for you should you need to call in and ask specific questions, that's 336-70-COVID, 336-70-COVID. So plenty of information on that website. Y'all can go check it out. All of the previous COVID-19 related podcasts are on there as well. So um, just want to remind everyone of that. We, we do want to get into this conversation and, and looking forward to just some um, kind of best practices and, and some snippets of wisdom and advice from Dr. Caballo Quinones. Before we get started, Dr., uh, if you just want to remind everyone, um, maybe not everyone listened to the previous podcast, but just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, how long you've been with Wake Forest Baptist Health, and uh, maybe what you do uh, on a day in and day out basis here uh, as part of our organization. Sure. Thank you, Justin. Um, thank you, first of all, for the, inv- for the invite and also um, to your team for everything that you are doing um, to share information with our community. Um, for the people that don't know me, I'm a pediatric psychologist um, at Brenner's Children's Hospital, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Pediatrics. And basically, I work daily with kids and teenagers and their families. Um, and basically with kids that have chronic medical conditions and also comorbidities with mental health issues that are related with depression, anxiety, and other related symptoms. Um, and also bilingual, um, licensed psychologist. And I work also with Hispanic communities um, in the clinics. Um, así que para todos los que nos están escuchando, muchas gracias, eh, Justin, por la invitación. Eh, yo soy psicóloga pediátrica en el Hospital de Niños Brenner y soy eh, profesora asistente en el Departamento de Pediatría. Trabajo con familias hispanas también y trabajo con niños y adolescentes que tienen condiciones de salud crónica, eh, ¿verdad? Médicas y que también tienen otras condiciones como depresión, ansiedad, entre otros. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I'm, as, if people listening uh, couldn't pick up there, um, we do have the added benefit and resource of the doctor being bilingual. So uh, just like our initial podcast with Dr. Cabello Quinones, this podcast will also be um, in both English and Spanish. Um, mostly her speaking uh, in extensively in Spanish. I will try my best uh, not to embarrass myself. <laughs> and um, hopefully that uh, this, we just want this to be a resource and be able to get out uh to as many people in our community as possible, um, no matter if, if their first language is English or, or Spanish. So um, 
definitely grateful for for this opportunity to to be able to do this podcast in both English and Spanish. Um, so thanks for just kind of reminding us uh, about what you do uh, <laughs> on a day to day basis. And you know, with coronavirus, COVID nineteen, um, I think it's been pretty well documented in the media and in the press and online. Um, there's just various increased stressors and, and um, certain areas uh, where anxiety has increased in many of our lives. Um, you know, I think to some degree humans are creatures of habit and we've had to um, throw some of our old habits out, out the window and try and reestablish new habits and new um, processes and schedules um, especially with children, if we have children in the household, um, whether they be, you know, younger kiddos or older school age children. Um, and, and that brings potentially a whole new um, set of, of challenges and um, anxiety inducing situations. Um, so um, with that, um, you know, part of helping our children process through this whole situation with COVID is, you know, hopefully coming alongside them um, in, in situations that they find stressful or anxiety, whether it be with virtual learning or, um, you know, not being able to um, communicate how they usually communicated or hung out with their, with their friends. Um, so, um, you know, just a whole set of, of situations that arise that cause stress with, with kids and adolescents. So, um, you know, looking forward to, to your thoughts on some of these questions, Dr. And we'll jump into um, the first one. And just as a reminder, it's, it's stress and anxiety management with kids and adolescents. Uh, it's uh, manejo de estrés y ansiedad con niños y adolescentes. So I just want to dive into the first question. You know, what are what are some of the normal responses to stress or anxiety in children and adolescents? Uh, ¿Cuáles son las uh, respuestas normales de niños y adolescentes ante el estrés o ansiedad? Muy bien. Um, so basically, it is important to understand that um, young people like adults experience stress. And it can come from a variety of sources like, you know, school or friends or the situation at home while we are living now with COVID-19. And some stress could be positive, you know, like that stress that makes us do things or react over situations. Like, for example, mm -hmm. when we are having a performance in sport or dance or when we're, not, we're going to have a test or when we need to react over a emergency. But when we are under too much stress and that can start to affect our functioning or our daily activities, mm -hmm. we need to start to be alert over that. So basically, um, when we talk about that, we need to start to see the behaviors and, and the changes in behavior and mood that they can have. And I'm going to give some examples. Um, los, los jóvenes y adultos, ¿verdad? Es muy importante entender que los jóvenes y los niños pueden tener, um, experimentar estrés como los adultos y esto puede provenir de diferentes fuentes, por ejemplo, la escuela, eh, ¿verdad? la presión en la casa, las amistades, las expectativas que los maestros o otras personas tienen sobre ellos y sobre todo ahora con lo que está ocurriendo con el COVID-19, eh, con el COVID-19. Eh, algunos de los, de los tipos de estrés ¿verdad? O, o las reacciones de estrés pueden ser positivas, por ejemplo, cuando nosotros vamos a tomar un examen o cuando vamos a hacer alguna actividad física o cuando vamos a tener alguna presentación artística eh, o cuando vamos a reaccionar en una um, emergencia. Sin embargo, cuando este estrés está con nosotros por un periodo largo de tiempo y empieza a afectar nuestro funcionamiento diario o cómo yo ¿verdad? Me, me comporto, eh, es una alerta de que ¿verdad? me está afectando. Y algunos de los ejemplos que eso puede eh, ¿verdad? ser eh, una reacción eh, son las siguientes. Por ejemplo, eh, estar pendiente a los cambios de conducta y, y emociones de nuestros niños. Por ejemplo, pueden estar más temerosos o preocupados por la salud de sus seres queridos. 
o la salud de ellos mismos. And you can start to see fears and concerns for their health and their loved ones. And you can also see changes in sleep or eating patterns or habits. For example, they are sleeping too much or they are sleeping too little. They start to have nightmares or they start to eat more than usual. They start to have changes in their weight, like gaining weight or losing weight. Mm -hmm. um, you can see also changes in behaviors, for example, crying too much, aggressive mm -hmm. behaviors or outbursts, isolation, mainly in teenagers that they prefer to be alone. Mm -hmm. um, lack of motivation that they don't want to do things that they enjoy before they don't feel like like they want to do it okay. um, <clears throat> también se puede ver verdad cambian en patrones de sueño o alimentación eh, que no comen como antes que comen menos o que comen más o que duermen más o que duermen menos eh, que tienen pesadillas eh, que empiezan a tener cambios en la conducta por ejemplo llanto descontrolado eh, comportamientos agresivos, que prefieren estar aislados, eh, que están agresivos o, ¿verdad? con otros, eh, con los hermanos o con la familia, falta de motivación. Eh, también puede haber problemas de concentración o que se distraen fácilmente o también que tienen cambios en su estado de ánimo, por ejemplo, más irritados del usual, eh, miedo excesivo, tristeza, coraje. You can see also like changes in, in like in their concentration, like they cannot concentrate as usual, but they start mm -hmm. to be easily distracted. Mm -hmm. Also, you can see like mood changes, for example, being more irritated than usual or excessive fears or, I don't know, anger or sadness, like they are more sad than usual or kind of worry all the time. And finally, mm -hmm. other symptoms could be changes in like physical symptoms or like they start to have like pain, like stomach aches or headaches. And mm -hmm. it's not any medical reason, like, you know, it's not any mm -hmm. virus or they are not sick. They are mm -hmm. just having these changes. Um, <clears throat> so basically, también, finalmente puede tener síntomas físicos como dolores de cabeza, dolor eh, de estómago, en náusea y no necesariamente relacionada a alguna condición médica, eh, no es que tiene ningún virus ni nada, sino que estos síntomas se dan en el contexto del estrés. Well, that's, that's very helpful to, um, I think, for parents to be able to have several of these um, possible signs that they can, that they can identify and, um, you know, initiate a conversation with their children or their adolescents about you know, helping them identify some of their feelings. Um, you know, that kind of leads me into the second question. You know, once, if you identify some of these behaviors or changes in your children and um, you start to have a conversation with them about it, um, you know, what's the best way to address feelings of fear and uncertainty uh, with, with our kids and our adolescents? Uh, you es cómo se puede manejar sentimientos de miedo y incertidumbre con los niños y a los sententes. Okay. Um, so, I think it is um, natural that our kids and our teenagers have concerns and being worried, uh, mainly mm -hmm. with this new, you know, situation that we are living. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very important to provide space to share their fears, um, feelings and concerns, like an open conversation about it. And, and I think it's very important also to explore what are the stressors, because maybe your teenager and your little kid did not have the same concerns. Yeah. Maybe they're gonna have different kind of stressors at mm -hmm. the present, and it's the same situation, right? Um, and try to find out um, the way to normalize the situation. I know it's very difficult to normalize our new reality, but when we talk about normalize, mm -hmm. is how we can provide security, um, asking questions and offering clear information about, you know, what they are experiencing, what is happening, what we are doing, and help them to feel in control over the situation. Um, for example, you can help, um, you can share with them how they can fight the virus or what we are doing, you know, against that, for example, hand washing or, you know, we need to eat well or what we are doing different that can help us to have like um, 
control over the situation. I think that's going to help to decrease the fears and feeling of uncertainty in, in kids and teenagers. Uh -huh. Así que um, básicamente es natural, ¿verdad? Que nuestros niños y, y adolescentes estén preocupados, eh, sobre todo por lo que está ocurriendo. Eh, así que es muy importante poder proveerles a ellos el, el tiempo y el espacio para poder hablar sobre sus preocupaciones, sus sentimientos, eh, sus miedos, eh, tener unas conversaciones abiertas sobre esto y hacerle preguntas, sobre todo explorar cuáles son los estresores presentes y dejar en claro que lo que maybe para el adolescente no va a ser la misma preocupación que para niño pequeño, ¿no? Así que explorar eso y, y poder normalizar la situación, ya sea brindándole sentido de seguridad, haciéndole preguntas frecuentes, ofreciéndole información clara de lo que está ocurriendo y ayudándolos a que se sientan en control sobre la situación, ya sea con, con, dándole estrategias de cómo nosotros hacemos eh, para combatir el virus, por ejemplo, nos lavamos las manos más a menudo, tenemos distancia física con otras personas, eh, cuidamos de nuestra higiene o la higiene de nuestro hogar, dormimos o comemos mejor, etc. Okay, well, that is helpful. So, ultimately, you know, as parents or guardians or caretakers, you know, we want to have um, our kids, you know, it's our natural tendency to, to want to protect them shelter them, guard them, um, you know, and a part of that would just be wanting them to you know, not have as, uh, the stress level that maybe they, they have been having in order to help reduce the stress level. Um, so if you want to talk to us just for a minute about how stress and anxiety might, might be reduced in children and adolescents, I, I think that would be, I think that would be great. Uh, so it's como se puede reducir el estrés y la ansiedad en niños y adolescentes. Seguro. Eh, I think it's very important to think that everyone manages stress and anxiety in different ways. Uh, not necessarily what works for me when I work for my kids or what works for my little kids when I work for my teenagers. So. Yeah. We need to be clear about the differences in age and understanding, mm -hmm. but also um, explore how they work, you know, better in certain situations. And I would recommend um, to start with asking the specific questions. For example, what do you care about? How do you feel? Are questions that you can ask to your teenager and to your little kids, and probably you're gonna have answers that are totally different. And based on that, you can kind of start to address that. And you can also try to maintain the routine as normal as possible in our new reality. And I know we have been talking about this in many occasions about like, yeah, keep the routine, but how are we going to keep the routine when we are having all these changes? And when we talk about maintain routine, it's basically be flexible, but at the same time, try to maintain the times that you were waking up usually, or the time that you are going back to bed usually, or um, mm -hmm. the time that you eat your meals in family, or the time, try to make time for free activities, for play, you know, also for the teenagers to connect with their friends, even using video games or, you know, um, video calls. Mm -hmm. um, it is important also to try to identify activities that help them to um, express or regulate their emotions. For example, you can use arts, dance, music, sports um, as an activity to do that. And not necessarily you're going to be talking about that. You know, sometimes teenagers don't like to talk about it, but they can use these kind of activities to regulate or express how they feel and just doing body, you know, movements or just doing some physical activities or just, I don't know, doing an art piece can help them to express that. Also, you can promote activities like, you know, exercises or physical activities in your backyard or going to do some hiking if possible or maintain a healthy diet, good sleep, going to help to manage the stress and reduce the anxiety. Also, how you can use your support system, like, for example, family and friends, and try to connect with them using phone calls or video calls. Now we have a lot of access to that and are free using WhatsApp or 
um, Facebook Messenger. Now I think even Gmail <laughs> have like a face a FaceTime fl- platform. You can even use your FaceTime. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like a lot of, of stuff out there like Zoom that are free and accessible for the families to connect with their loved ones and. And also, it's very, very important to try to avoid or limit too much exposure to media or social media. Um, Because sometimes we are receiving too much information and it's kind of scary and can just increase their stress. So if you can just decrease that or limit the access that they are having to this news or, you know, social media news about the numbers and how many people are dying and how many people are sick, I think that's going to help to reduce their concerns and worries. Um, so, básicamente, ¿no? Eh, es okay. importante hacerle preguntas a nuestros niños y adolescentes sobre qué les está preocupando, cómo se sienten, eh, abrir esa conversación, ¿no? Y mantener en la medida que sea posible una rutina. Eh, cuando hablamos de rutina, sabemos que es difícil con esta situación, pero es como que tratar de acostarse a la hora que usualmente nos acostamos o levantarnos a la misma hora, eh, tratar de tener las horas eh, ¿verdad? estipuladas para comida o para jugar o para hacer asignaciones eh, tratar también de utilizar actividades que promuevan la regulación y expresión emocional por ejemplo el arte, el baile eh, los deportes la música eh, la actividad física mantener una, una dieta saludable eh, el poder descansar lo suficiente todas estas actividades ayudan a que uno pueda manejar y reducir el estrés adicionar a eso, identificar nuestro sistema de apoyo o grupo de apoyo, ya sea familiares, amigos, maestros, y conectar con ellos a través de diferentes plataformas, ya sea a través de videollamadas o llamadas telefónicas, o también evitar la exposición continua y exagerada a eh, los medios de comunicación o las noticias en donde estamos teniendo demasiado bombardeo con, con noticias negativas y preocupantes. Thank you, doctor. This is um, good information. Um, I know that, you know, lots of lots of us parents or guardians with with kids that in the house now for this extended period of time is just it's a new world to us. Yeah. Um, so you know, I, you know, I like the idea of obviously there are certain instances or um, incidents that happen that would peak stress or anxiety. Um, so there's kind of that acute, but then there's, you know, maybe some kids or adolescent teens uh, are maybe have this kind of underlying um, current of anxiety or stress that maybe they need help talking, identifying, walking through. Um, so I guess uh, thinking not necessarily with just one one off incidents, but what are some kind of overall strategies or ongoing strategies or coping skills that we can help implement with, with our children for managing stress, uh, either be it with, with younger kids or older or older adolescents? Uh, so, ¿cuáles son algunas eh, estrategias para manejar el estrés con niños y adolescentes? Okay. So we can be discussing these strategies like for a whole podcast because yeah. it could be many. So I'm just going to try to give you some examples and, okay. you know, that things that we can use at home. And mm-hmm. always remember that if you feel like after try this stuff um, and the, the, the stuff that I mentioned before, you feel like it's not helping and it's getting worse, always consider, you know, professional help like psychology or psychiatrist or even with your primary care doctor that they can do a referral and try to see how we can help but mm-hmm. it's some stuff that you can do for example um we can use exercises of like um relaxation skills or deep breathing exercises um i always recommend with the little ones that it's a little bit more difficult you can even use um resources like okay let's use is a flower and let's see how we can go you know smell the flower and that means that you are doing inhale and then you're gonna do bubbles and you are excel you know it's kind mm-hmm. you can play but at the same time you are giving them uh, um, some copying skills 
with a teenager, it's more like, you know, you can use even phone apps like Headspace or Calm app that they have some exercises for teenagers that they can use. And then they love technology. So that is one resource for them. Um, and they can also use deep breathing or diaphragmatic deep breathing um, in which they are using that muscles to kind of relax their nervous system. Um, other thing that we can use is mindfulness exercises. Mm -hmm. um, I love mindfulness exercises because we can use that with, with so little. I means like you can use all your senses, you know, connect with your five senses in different ways. And what we are looking with mindfulness exercises is try to move our thoughts to the present moment and with the here and now. And it's how you can connect with, for example, with the nature. And let me just use my sense for that. For example, let me feel the breeze in my face or let me just um, listen to the birds that are singing or let me just touch the grass with my feet. It's different examples that you can use that are helping you to kind of ground and connect with the present moment instead to be in your own head thinking about what's going to happen and what is, you know, what is the future looks like and be so stressed out. So I think there are just simple strategies that you can use, but you can add meditation exercises, yoga exercises, Mm -hmm. physical activity like sports dancing is very helpful to arts drawing um music people that play instruments all that activity helps to manage stress and anxiety and our coping skills i always said that it's important to identify what are the interests and talents of your kids yes and based on that you can use that as a coping skill yeah. And I think that is very useful because you are using something that they already know or they already like and use that for something positive. Like use that when you are feeling stressed or when you're feeling scared, or when you're feeling sad. And mm -hmm. I think that is the best option with, with kids that are little, even with teenagers. Um, so básicamente algunos de los ejemplos que podemos utilizar, ¿verdad? Eh, es ejercicios de respiración profunda o relajación, en donde con niños pequeños puedes utilizar la estrategia de que cojas una flor y le digas que la, la vuelan, eso sería inhalar, y que hagan burbujas con la boca, ¿verdad?, soplando hacia afuera, eso sería exhalar. Eh, con adolescentes sería más ejercicios de relajación diafragmática, en donde van a estar utilizando el diafragma, ¿verdad?, ese músculo para inhalar y exhalar lentamente. Eh, puedes utilizar ejercicios de meditación o yoga, eh, también utilizar lo que le llamamos ejercicios de atención plena, en donde estamos conectando con nuestros cinco sentidos, y básicamente ahí lo que hacemos es que utilizamos eh, nuestro, ¿verdad? Visión, audición, tacto, eh, gusto o tocar las cosas para poder, ¿verdad? Eh, sentirme que estoy conectándome con mi cuerpo, pero a la misma vez con el presente, en vez de estar mirando hacia el futuro o, o teniendo muchas preocupaciones en mi cabeza, por ejemplo, cómo yo conecto con la naturaleza. Eh, a través de voy a caminar descalza en la grama o voy a sentir la brisa en mi cara o voy a escuchar cómo los pajaritos están cantando. Esos son ejemplos que puedes utilizar para poder conectar con, ¿verdad? con el presente eh, o con el aquí y el ahora. Eh, también es importante saber que no todos los niños y adolescentes eh, manejan el estrés igual, así que hay que identificar qué le funciona a cada uno y sobre todo utiliza la, la, los talentos y los intereses de tu niño para poder saber qué usar con ellos, por ejemplo, niños que les gusta más dibujar, o que les gusta más colorear, o que les gusta más las artes, versus niños que les gusta tocar música, o escuchar música. Utiliza esos recursos para poder manejar el estrés. Great info, once again, doctor. You know, as we wrap up, we're getting ready to, to come to a conclusion with this episode. And, you know, a lot of this is great information and great advice. And I, you know, kind of want to follow up. I think maybe one of the tendencies that some parents and guardians, caretakers have, um, you know, if they don't want to necessarily, if they feel like the conversation might be uncomfortable on some level to talk about anxiety or stress or problems or issues, you know, maybe some people just try and, and deal with it by ignoring it. And like, oh, if I just kind of, don't look at that for a while or don't think about that. Uh, it'll just kind of resolve itself or go away. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I'm really glad that you're providing these 
these tips and, and pieces of, of advice to help people talk through um, the situations and help them with their kids and adolescents. And, you know, we talked about this on our previous podcast, but in case someone didn't, um, didn't hear that one, you know, as we wrap up, just I guess generally speaking, you know, as opposed to ignoring it, because more than likely your kids, you know, it's, they, they know about COVID-19. They know about coronavirus. It's not like they don't know about it. It's dramatically impacted mm-hmm. the vast majority of our lives. Yeah. Um, you know, how should we just go and talk generally about um, COVID-19 and, and what it's doing with, with our lives and, you know, maybe the different types of anxieties or stress, stress points that, that it's creating. Um, you know, how can we talk to our kids and adolescents about this? Uh, or como debo hablar con mis hijos sobre COVID-19? Yeah, um, I think that is a very <laughs> important question. And I think many people, as you said, are sometimes just ignoring the situation or they mm-hmm. don't know how to address the situation. And we just put like a taboo, you know, on that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to talk about that but because they're going to just increase the stress. And mm-hmm. sometimes just do not talk about it. You're going to increase the stress <laughs> mm-hmm. because it's just scary when we cannot just process our dogs um so again first of all i think you need to ask questions what they know about COVID 19 why they heard about it what are their concerns what they what they understand for that what are their fears um and you can sit down with them and have a conversation based on their age clearly about you know all these questions because you don't going to have the same conversation with the little one that you're going to have with teenager a teenager you need to be more clear and Obviously, with the little one, you maybe can use a storybooks, and I can share with you later, Justine, and maybe for the website, um, some storybooks that are out there that you can use with kids that are in Spanish and English about COVID-19 and use a lot of good night illustrations um, for them and also with teenagers. Something that I usually Mm -hmm. recommend is if, if they ask you a question that you don't know, use that as an opportunity. And, and you can sit down with them and do the search together. You know, you can sit down mm-hmm. with the computer, with the cell phone, and try to ask, answer the question together and, you know, use resources as the CDC information or other information to share what are the concerns. Um, also, you can share information about how the community is helping and how they are doing changes to keep them safe, but also as a family, what we are doing, you know, what, what we can do to keep them safe about the coronavirus and explain to them mm-hmm. the difference, you know, like it's more risky for people that are sick or for people that are very old. Um, doesn't mean that we don't gonna take care of ourselves, but if we are he- healthy and we, you know, maintain an immune system healthy, like eating well and sleeping well and that, that's gonna help us to be, you know, not say but healthy Mm -hmm. um so basically i think that is some you know strategies that you can use also you can it's it's very important to be um available or accessible to your kids um and when i say available means physically but also emotionally and support them and nurture them in this process because sometimes they don't going to have it specifically words for you but you're going to notice that something is odd. And Mm -hmm. when we are open and honest about that, and we can show them our own emotions, you know, that it's okay to be scared. I'm scared too. Mm -hmm. Or it's okay to be stressed out. I'm stressed out too, but I'm doing this to feel better. And maybe you can involve them in activities like let's do exercise together or let's, I don't know, play a game together or let's, do something new video games together i don't know it's just trying to look new alternatives to spend more time with your teenagers and with your um little kids because Mm -hmm. being at home so much is hard for them and they are not in their regular activities so i think the stress is just increasing for that reason um as it, as, as, so i think that is a way that you can kind of touch that topic and promote stability um with modeling you know if Mm -hmm. you are too stressed out and you don't know how to manage your own emotions for sure they're just gonna receive that and they're gonna feel stressed out about it um 
Así que básicamente eh, cuando hablamos de, de este tipo de información, volvemos, es importante hacer preguntas claras sobre qué saben sobre el coronavirus, qué, qué han escuchado sobre eso, cuáles son sus miedos o preocupaciones y tratar de explicarles de acuerdo a su nivel de edad. Si ellos hacen alguna pregunta que usted no sabe, utilícela como una oportunidad para aprender juntos, ya sea buscando la información juntos en el internet o usando, utilizando otros recursos como cuentos o... Eh, utilizar la información del CDC o en la página del website de, de Wake Forest, eh, compartir información sobre qué está haciendo la comuni comunidad o los profesionales de la salud, eh, qué ustedes como familia están haciendo para mantenerse eh, eh, saludables, ya sea comiendo bien, cuidando su sueño, eh, haciendo actividad física, hablarle de, de cuál es la diferencia de la gente ¿verdad? Que, que, que se está muriendo, la gente que está más enferma, por ejemplo, personas con condiciones de salud crónica, personas muy mayores. Eh, estar accesible tanto física como emocionalmente a su hijo es muy importante porque eso le va a promover a ellos estabilidad y el sentido de comunidad de que puede hablar con usted. Además de que modélele cómo hablarle, háblele calmado, tranquilo, sea abierto y honesto sobre los miedos, ¿verdad?, Modélele cómo usted maneja sus miedos, involúcralo en cómo manejar los miedos juntos y promueva estabilidad a través de, ¿verdad? de, de conversación y manejo saludable de sus emociones y, y de su salud, mostrándole ejemplos eh, de cómo usted eh, puede manejar sus propios miedos y su propia ansiedad día a día. Thank you so much, Dr. Caballero, señores. Thank you. Muchas, muchas gracias. <laughs> <De nada. laughs> uh, I appreciate you taking the time once again. This has just been really helpful information. Let people take the time to listen to it and, and garner some, some best practices, uh, tips on, on communicating with our children and helping them through, you know, what they feel might be a stressful or anxiety inducing situation. Um, so this has been great. Um, Appreciate, appreciate you taking the time. Everyone uh, listening out there, um, the doctor did mention, you know, obviously if you um, have more questions or, or want to reach out to, um, you know, talk to a provider or have your child talk to a provider um, about um, certain anxiety or, or stressful situations, um, you know, that's what, that's what the doctor and her colleagues are there for. Um, so please feel free to reach out. You can just visit our website, wakehealth.edu, um, or you can also visit brennerchildrens.org, brennerchildrens.org, and um, psychiatry and counseling um, information are on both websites. You can also just call 716-WAKE, and um, they'll connect you with, with the right department for additional resources for, for your family. Um, so once again, appreciate your time, ma'am. Um, I hope that you um, are doing well, and uh, hopefully we'll get to chat again soon. Thank you so much, Justin, for the opportunity and for, you know, this bilingual podcast that can also give information to our Spanish speakers in the community, too. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Absolutely. It's been great. Um, thank you to everyone listening out there. And uh, until we chat again, please be well. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Best Health Podcast, brought to you by Wake Forest Baptist Health. For more wellness info, check out wakehealth.edu slash besthealth and follow us on social media. Wake Forest Baptist Health, care for life.